Okay, I'm going to show you how I use the minor pentatonic scale for soloing. And um, I think most people already know, or you should probably know if you're interested in soloing, if you're in A, A minor, and you're in position one, that you'd be here. And, um, you know, a lot of people play lots of cool licks in position one. And I definitely recommend you keep playing those cool licks. But what the diagonal pentatonic is, is when you just add extensions at the bottom and at the top. And so you end up with this lick. I'll do it real slow. And you can tell it's a bunch of repeats because it's what it is. And it just allows you to sort of um, gracefully, you know, go up the neck in a different way using, you know, some a few different... Uh, there are no different notes, but it's a little different uh, phrasing. You know, you could, you know, give it a little different uh, flavor instead of just. So having that little extra, you know, it adds cool stuff to it. Or so um, and you're going right up to the root. And whenever you sort of vibrato the root on the second string instead of the first one, it gives you a little more room so you can give it a little more oomph. So it just gives you uh, more variety for playing the pentatonic. So it's, it's nothing new. It's always been there, and it's just there for you to uh, explore. So um, here's a chart. It shows this... Um, extended uh, pentatonic diagonal look. It's uh, for position one. Here it is. And again, you can see it just goes. And we're sliding up here so that we get up to the next form that we want to use, which is form four. So the next diagonal um, pattern that I want to show you is based on this uh, number four. And now let's go back to the original uh, pentatonic forms or pentatonic uh, patterns or, or, or positions, I should say. Here's the chart on that. Notice this chart showing position five below position one, which is good because that's showing that little extension. So you got part of five sliding into one, sliding into two, and then even up into three or the bottom of four. You can see the pattern on four. All right, see that pattern four? All right, now let's take a look at that on the neck. Pattern four is here. All right, now, what we're going to do, let me show you the uh, pattern to the diagonal of this pattern four. So this is the second diagonal shape that you need to learn, and here it is. Okay, and that shape then is showing this right here on the neck. And we're back up to the actual tonic, or back up to the key that we're playing in. All right, now, <clears throat> let me back up a little bit, and, and let's talk a little bit about stuff you need to know before you get into all this. And I'm going to slow it down, and we're going to fool around with that one, too. But let's just take a look here why we're using number four. Okay, so if we're in A, and you know that A is here, and you know A is here on the fifth fret, Okay, on the um, rooting the the fifth fret sixth string as a root note and the beginning of position one. Okay, 
That's important. But what you also need to know are where the other A chords are on the neck so that you can use those as references for other places that you can play lead solos on the neck. So here we go. The next one is here. So if it's a minor. It's right here on the 12th fret, but we're fret where the tonic is on the fifth string. So you know that you can play all these other chords that are rooted on the fifth, uh, you know, A is rooted on the fifth string. And that there's an A up here, an octave higher, that roots on the twelfth. Okay, so knowing that's important because that's where pattern four is. It goes below that but we're adding this to it which is part of position three and then we're going above it into position five and then we're sliding well we're not sliding yet but we can slide up this is now we're up to position one again because the A is here and the A is up here. It's the octave. So you need to study what the notes are on the sixth string, all of them. E, F, G, A, B, or sorry, B, C, D, E. And the same thing on the A, you need to know where they are on the A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And then you need to know what's going on uh, as you go up the neck and what you can do is if you know this is a D once you study and you know this is a D that frets on the fifth you can use the 12th fret as the nut and you know that the you know that the D is on the fifth fret here so you can just go up to the fifth fret off the nut and there it is so I usually use more visual patterns and I and 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 repeats and stuff like that to help me visualize the the fretboard, um, and you got to memorize certain things and then you can then you can visualize the other things. So it really makes it easy if you if you do it that way, and you can learn these notes that are on the fifth and sixth string. You know, in time, you know, just study it a little bit every day. Just kind of experiment and then when you do it on your own and you sort of like oh okay this is G where's the other G again you know if, if G's down here then you know oh okay 12th fret all right it's 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 up here on the third from the 12th so here that third from the 12th would be here on this dot so that's the other G and then you got to know where the other G is and that's where memory comes in to me the G is one below the A, okay? I mean, if, if A's here and G's here, that's one full, um, uh, to or one full tone, uh, or full t semi, it's not a semitone, it's a full tone down. So it's one full tone down here, uh, or from here. So that you know that's the G. That's just one way of knowing that's a G. Eventually, you just know that's a G. Okay, so that's uh, just the way I would just recommend. Just learn the notes on the fifth and sixth, sixth string, and, and it'll help you a lot when you're doing this kind of soloing and knowing where to play. So basically, the fourth, let's take the A. The fourth is where all these cool... a lot of cool stuff there and then when you're back at home base it's a lot of cool stuff there too and then also when you're up here on the extended part just a lot of cool lickage there so it's And 
don't forget that also on fourth, there's the extension. So once you're up here, I'm sorry. Now you're back to the repeat of position one. So there you go. You have, you're using all the positions, by the way. You're just using parts of them, and you're using this diagonal concept, okay? And, um, you know, go back and stop and take a look at it. Grab your guitar and start, you know, playing this diagonal scale and visualize it and memorize it and understand where you're going to play it relative to the chord, the uh, home base chord or the key, and then you'll be able to move that around on the neck. So here, let's take another example. Let's just take G. wherever. How about E? too hard and stiff. I'm just kind of need to loosen up a little bit. All right, there you go. So how about I do a little jam in D and you can see how all this fits together. I'll just try to keep it. I won't play too long, but let me just jam with this uh, little, um, just a quick repeat loop I did for, um, this song called Slow Gen by uh, uh, Joe Bonamassa. And it's a great little song to, uh, you know, to practice in D. So in D, let me just, before I get started, let's take a look at D. So D, where are the bar chords on the neck for D? You know? All right, you should know it's here, and it's here, and it's here. There's always, there should always be at least three of the bar chords on your neck for any given key. And that those three places are where you're going to play or where you can play lead guitar solos using the home bass or the first position and the fourth position, okay, as references. So if this is rooted on the fifth, that we're going to use the fourth pattern, knowing that, knowing that we're here, and knowing that, that that's the root, and the root is up here, we're going to do this diagonal. Well, you can actually do that. I keep wanting to do that, but it's actually so. Um, the, the slide one is on the home base one. That's the only one you do that extra slide on. So the fourth one is. You're back up to the root there. So I'm going to play there. Then you have the the D that roots on the six. So that's going to be the number one position. And that, you have to know there's an extra one there. And there's the root. You got the one here, too. 
okay and then the one there's another one up here so that's number four here should know that you can slide down to the number one. Now one slide up. Because you're if you're if you're on the one, you gotta slide to the extended part, which is gonna be Oh sorry, uh where am I? I'm in D. Then you're at the back up to the fourth. All right, well, let's just jam. I mean, I could be here all day doing this. You're going to have to put the time in and just sort of study the charts and look at everything and just sort of see how it fits into your style of play because you're going to have your own licks. You can throw your licks in there just anywhere on those notes and come up with whatever you like. I mean, you know, if you like... You know, whatever kind of licks you like to do... You know, whatever. All them cool licks, you can just throw them in there. Just make sure you're hitting those notes. All right, let's jam. Now, normally, you'd start kind of low. beautiful scale. It's like you can't hit a bad note. objective was just to show you those diagonal patterns and hopefully you got something out of it and so thanks for stopping by and uh, see you on the tube